The Sahara Desert spans across the northern part of Africa, covering 10 different countries and three time zones. It's Earth's third largest desert, only behind the Antarctic and Arctic deserts, with a very harsh environment due to many factors. The temperatures are extremely hot, around 30 degrees Celsius on average, to the hottest ever recorded temperature of 58 degrees Celsius. Believe it or not, this area of land also receives very little rainfall, with half of the desert getting less than one inch of rain annually. The Sahara Desert is amazingly vast and probably even bigger than you can imagine. Its size is a total area of 9.3 million square kilometers that stretches over 3,000 miles in length. To put this into perspective, this is about the same size as the entire country of the United States of America and accounts for 8% of Earth's total land mass. Looking at this heat map, there is no other place on Earth that receives as much daylight as the Sahara Desert does. On average, the hottest part here showing in the darkest red gets 4,000 hours of daylight per year, which equates to over 91% of the daylight hours being sunshine. If we could harness the incredible solar energy from this part of the world using solar panels, would this end our worldwide dependence on fossil fuels and allow humanity to use 100% sustainable, renewable energy instead? And if it would work, why haven't we done so already? In this video, we will take a look at what would happen if we covered the entire Sahara Desert in solar panels. But first, let's take a look at how solar panels convert solar energy into electrical energy. Simply explained, solar panels are made up of numerous solar cells. These solar cells, also known as photovoltaic PV cells, are made from silicon because it is a great semiconductor for electricity and is also the second most abundant element on Earth. Crystalline silicon is packed between two conductive layers, with each solar cell using two different layers of silicon. One layer is N-type silicon that contains extra electrons and has a negative charge. And the second layer is P-type silicon that contains holes or extra spaces for electrons and has a positive charge. Where these two types of silicon meet, electrons can wander across the PN junction, leaving a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other. When photons or particles of light from the sun strike these silicon cells with enough energy, it can split electrons free from atoms. Because of the electrical force at the PN junction, there is only one way for the electrons to go, and this is what generates a flow to produce electricity. The maximum voltage one PV cell in a solar panel can produce is only 0.5 volts, which is not very much on its own and depending on the size of the solar panel will determine how much voltage it can produce. Solar panels have configurations containing anywhere from 32, 36, 48, 60, 72, and 96 PV cells. But even one solar panel on its own won't do much. For just a single person household to solely rely on solar generated power, they would need to have at least four residential solar panels attached to their home. So now that we understand how solar panels produce energy, are deserts really the best place for solar panels to be used? Well, deserts are one of the most obvious places to think of due to the amount of unused land, along with the extremely hot temperatures. It's estimated that if we covered just 1.2% of the Sahara Desert with solar panels, we could meet the energy demands of the entire world. But despite several projects looking to make this happen, and several failed attempts in the past, there are very legitimate reasons why we have yet to harness this solar power and turn it into energy for all. First, solar panels are still very expensive to produce. The average cost of installing a 1 by 2 meter solar panel on a house is approximately $450. And because of the conditions in the Sahara, like extreme temperatures and sandstorms, any panels installed there would have to be even stronger and resistant to extreme environmental changes than the regular solar panel you see on houses. This means for each panel in the Sahara, for the sake of this video, let's estimate the cost would be three times the price of a residentially installed solar panel or about $1,350 per panel. 
Let's also assume every panel installed is over double the size of residential ones, say 5 square meters of desert space. To cover the Sahara, you would need 720,000 solar panels. This means the panels alone would cost $972 million. And that's before you calculate any other costs into consideration. Because of the remote location and lack of current industrialization of the Sahara Desert, other costs would include infrastructure, transportation, and human labor. This would put the total cost well into the billions just to get this idea implemented, let alone continuing costs afterwards. Plus, we would need to figure out how to even get the necessary supplies there to begin with. There are only about five roads that span across the entire Sahara Desert from the north to the south and definitely no trains. If we want this to work as a long-term solution, then roads and railways would have to be built to transport everything to where it needs to be and provide a way for us to stay in contact with our solar farm and the people who work there. If we covered half the Sahara Desert in solar panels, we would damage local wildlife and habitats. There would be an environmental shift that would lead to local temperatures rising by up to 2.5% and a global shift of 0.39 degrees Celsius. Now, this might not sound like much, but because the entire Earth would increase in temperature, the compounding effects would be massive. In part, due to climate change, our Earth is already warming at an alarming rate, melting the polar ice caps and causing natural disasters that will only worsen as the years pass. But despite all this, solar farms in the Sahara Desert could still work. Sure, we probably shouldn't cover the entire desert in them, but what if we just covered a portion? There are already projects like this in existence. The Noor project in Morocco is one of the first of its kind. $9 billion has been invested in creating a concentrated solar panel plant, which is now the world's largest. With panels covering 43 square kilometers, the plant can provide enough energy for 2 million people globally. The project entered its third phase in 2020 and long-term impacts of it are still largely unknown, but this could be one of the best answers we've come up with to providing the world with renewable energy. But although Spain and Algeria are benefiting from this multi-country enterprise and Portugal is soon to be, residents of Morocco are sadly still not receiving the promised renewable energy and can barely afford their own electricity. For the project to fully succeed, serious changes need to occur. So, to answer the question, should we cover the Sahara Desert in solar panels? Well, maybe not quite the entire desert. Although the Moroccan project has offered us a glimpse into a potentially renewable future, to cover the entire desert would be simply unsustainable, impossible to cost and negotiate, and cause untold damage to the environment. Although solar panel projects are definitely the way forward in promoting renewable energy and helping prevent climate change, we might need to come up with some better solutions than covering the entirety of the Sahara Desert. We hope you enjoyed this video and please do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. For more interesting videos like this, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications and most importantly, share. Until then. We will see you soon in the next video.